Balance. It's one of the most fundamental aspects of the entire universe. You can find it in every nook and cranny of the entire world. The concept of balance is deeply ingrained in some of the greatest minds ever in history. Virgil Abloh, one of the greatest artists of our entire generation, arguably even ever, believed in this concept to its truest form. We will uncover the profound teachings that he had left before his passing. Get ready, my friends, because today we will be mastering the art of balance. Virgil Abloh typically had five rules that he used to establish balance. But to truly understand what he meant by that, and to truly understand how we got to that framework and that thinking, we need to understand where he came from and learn how he came. One of the Grew up in Rockford, Illinois. It, it was amazing, you know? I felt like I was just an average kid from the middle of nowhere. Virgil Abloh had a relentless desire to challenge the status quo and to continuously on push boundaries far past what anyone else can even imagine. From architecture to fashion, completely and fearlessly broke past any boundary that came in his way, leaving an undeniable mark on fashion and street culture as a whole. One of Virgil Abloh's most remarkable and recognizable creations was his infamous streetwear brand, Off-White. Sort of language, concept, post, this idea of streetwear, this idea of fashion looking for a change. This brand revolutionized the fashion world by blending in fashion with street culture and luxury all in the same space. This leading to him actually inspiring a whole new generation of fashion designers that have now gone on and come after him and created this whole industry in luxury streetwear. And the motto of this amazing brand speaks for itself, which goes, defining the lines between black and white is off white. What do you think Virgil Abloh meant by that? How I unpack it and how I analyze it is other and sheer balance. I mean, it's balance embodied in every single thread. Just look at all the designs that they've come up with. To understand balance, we need to know what his emphasis on, the, on his first tip was. And the emphasis on that very first tip prioritization. In order to achieve a healthy work-life balance, we need to know what we prioritize. What do you personally prioritize in yourself? What's at the top of the list, whether it be friends, family, loved ones? Where does that all fit on the echelon of your priorities? For me, I've, I've completely changed my priorities. At one stage in my life, I was prioritizing maybe schools, prioritizing <laughs> friendship, prioritizing family. But priorities shift and are constantly ever shifting. Sometimes you go into a work mode, sometimes you go into a, let's just make money. That's all we're focused on. And then you get into a state where you need to now focus on perhaps living life and enjoying it with your friends because you've worked so hard. Or you need to allocate time. The same way Virgil Abloh allocated time to creating art and being in spaces. The same way he prioritized that, you need to pick and choose what you want to prioritize, what you think is valuable. What are you prioritizing for the short term? And then thus in turn, what are you gonna then prioritize in the long term? I mean, no doubt in my mind is setting boundaries. And it's quite ironic that he never set any boundaries. The fashion industry set it up for him. In the industry setting up the boundaries, he was then able to go and destroy those boundaries with his priorities, because he knew what he was trying to achieve. Ironically, Quotes, my real profession is architecture. A lot of people quote my career, it's like, oh, you're not a fashion, you didn't go to fashion design school. But I went to architecture and I make architecture in my fashion design studio. Boundaries are so crucial because it's a very critical aspect of maintaining 
balance. That's what you need in order to be focused. You need to have friends and your family. So they know that this is not what I'm going to do. This is not what I'm setting a boundary here, here, here. Not only so that you can hold me accountable, so that I've been able to vocalize and that I know that I will not break these boundaries. I'm gonna continue until I meet my priorities. All right, well, this one, this one, this is what I'm throwing at you. It's unfortunate that Virgil Abloh isn't here with us today, but self-care, I think, is something that he would genuinely want to preach if he could come back and tell us is self-care, care for oneself. How are you supposed to meet your requirements and your boundaries if you do not have self-care? How are you? If you can't even take care of yourself, how are you gonna take care of your priorities? How are you gonna set up boundaries in place and, and maintain those boundaries if you're not mentally or physically not okay? It's one of the crucial necessities for even life. If something cannot take care of itself, how is it supposed to continue? How is it supposed to thrive? Many of us fail and fall into the trap of taking too much on. Although you've set your boundaries, although you've practiced prioritizing and you've practiced the art of self-care, now it's you deciding what are you gonna delegate and how much can you personally take on before it becomes too much. I know for me personally, my goal with myself is to build a personal brand and outsource the things that slow down my creative process so I can focus on being very creative and focus on being the leader and the role model in my entire organization. But I can't do that if I don't outsource. If I'm not giving my product or I'm not giving my videos to an editor or I'm not giving my videos to a thumbnail specialist who's way better at making thumbnails for me, then I would be able to make thumbnails by myself. I'm delegating those tasks because I know my efficiency isn't as great as someone else who could have done it a hundred times better. Virgil Abloh didn't build the entire manufacturing process from start to finish, right? He didn't come up, he didn't go all the way from creating the designs, produce the product, advertise the product, and then sell the product, ship the product. He didn't do all of that himself. He built a team around him, he built the arms and legs of the, the organization that we know is Off-White today, he started off by selling t-shirts, got into distribution, and he was able to distribute the t-shirts at a much faster rate. Influencers and rappers and artists all are now getting his t-shirts, and guess what? They're doing the marketing for him. He's not going and saying, hey, look at my, look at my new Off-White shirt. This is what ended up building the entire cult fan base, because he distributed and outsourced the things that he knew could have been done better without him. Establish what do you need to distribute and what do you need to outsource. Those are very two key things. This can even be in your personal lives, even if you're not starting a business, even if you're not starting a creative journey or endeavor. There's only ways that you can go and outsource even everyday things that you do in your life. Hire a cleaning company that comes in every Monday, Tuesday to clean your carpet. That gives you an hour of free time every single day or every Monday or Tuesday, whatever, whatever, however long it takes you to clean your house. I think this is a great way to end the video. And finally, like, this is the most key important thing that he's done. Give me one sec, give me one second. I'm gonna go get something to show you. I think this would be a great analogy. Just give me one second. When you look at the sneaker, right? For anyone who doesn't know, this is one of the sneakers that Virgil Abloh has designed, right? When you look at the sneaker and you look at what it means for culture and fashion, it's not the fact that, oh, he's just this redone, another no he remained present right he remained present in the idea that he set all these boundaries that he's not going to break to change the shoe up only five percent what he was doing out achieving something much greater which is actually in my opinion such an amazing sneaker such an amazing shoe um he's figured out a way to create art within that and that's why I think people are so shocked at what he's been able to do is because he remains present and you get those sort of dreamlike collages of the different architecture landscapes of different cities. And, and remember, quantity is often looked over for quality, right? Look at, look at the biggest businesses and the biggest companies of the world. They often prioritize quantity over quality. But sometimes we actually need to prioritize quality. Look at my main channel. I have a main channel dedicated just to promoting high quality long videos where I go ahead and I create the most entertaining stories and, and I package them in such a way where they're super high quality. There's no way you'll finish a vlog and not go, wow, I really enjoyed that. 
has the same thing about Virgil's done here. He's gone ahead and he's created these really, really high quality sneakers and designs and, and concepts. Then rather than just coming, oh, let me make 50 designs, let me make 50 sneakers. He's prioritized quality over quantity. And that's something that you need to remember. And that's the same thinking. In whatever you do, you need to remember to be present. And when you are present, you need to look at your priorities, you need to look at what you're outsourcing. You need to look at what your values are. You need to look at what boundaries you're setting. Virgil Abloh uses this practice to be holistically mindful and aware of what he's doing at all times. Because someone who's not aware of what they're doing are not aware if they're making any mistakes. And that's my analysis of me sitting through all the interviews, the blogs, the posts, the videos about Virgil Abloh. Hopefully you enjoy this video because balancing work and life is definitely not easy. And I don't think anyone ever promises that it's easy, but remember that it's very important. Or else everything could fall apart. The reason why I create videos like this is to, is to help remind you that, hey, the things that you can do to make it easier, the things that you can do to optimize and increase your creativity, increase your health, increase your wealth, increase even your financial awareness. Um, as you prioritize and set boundaries and use self-care and delegate tasks efficiently while remaining present in the moment, you'll then realize that you're actually achieving something harmonious, something that Virgil Abloh intended. Tell me if you enjoyed the video, what, you, your, what your takes are on what Virgil Abloh believed. I just want to know, what do you guys think? Is there anything that I may have gotten wrong? Is there anything that I missed? I'll be definitely looking forward to seeing your comments down below. In a world of inspiration, it is never truly a goodbye, but rather, till I see you next time.